Like, you know, I, I remember when you came in not too long ago with the lads, and I was watching you performing uh, Flying Without Wings, and I said, hey, there's, there's got to be, there's a solo artist in you, obviously, that you can hear right there. Where, what age were you when you went, I've got this instrument, I've got this thing? Um, you were in Sligo, obviously. Yeah, when I was young, I was, I was very shy in many ways, kind of quiet. Um, I spent a lot of time at my granny's house on a farm. Um, so socially, I suppose, when I went into school and stuff, I wasn't... I wasn't like kind of Mr. Bowlesy kind of, you know, yeah. I was kind of a bit of a wallflower really, you know? Yes. Um, but I sort of discovered quite early on that the one thing that I had no fear in whatsoever was singing, you know? There's some kind of inbuilt confidence that I wish I could only have like, in, in lots of other places in life. But um, I don't know, it's just, I mean, it's, there's some people that play sports or are carpenters and they just, they, it's not a cockiness, it's more that, confidence. it's a confidence, yeah. yeah. It's like, I know what I am, I know what I do. And, that's one thing that singing has always been for me, yeah. And were we able to get the outlet for that? Um, well, I suppose I was looking for one. There was a lot of good outlets for kids. I think in Ireland in general, you sing a lot in school and stuff. Yes. And great local theatre and kids kind of performance art stuff in Sligo. But um, the first thing that I'd done, it's it's quite mad because if, if you knew me as a person, yeah, I would literally, like, as I say, wallflower, really quiet and shy. But I put my name down for the skill talent competition. Okay. Because just because it was singing and I just didn't care. And I was a second year. I think it was about twelve, maybe. Yeah. And the rest of the competitors were like leave inserts and repeat leave inserts in full blown rock bands and stuff. Um. So it was just like me kind of singing in a high pitched voice against like all these leave insert rock bands. Remember what you sang? I sung actually the weekend. It's in. I sung Rock and Roll Kids as my first song. Paul Harrington, yeah. Charlie McGinnis. Uh, like I sung "Let It Be" by the Beatles. Right. Uh, I sung the same verse three times because I thought. That, that <laughs> but anyways, the, the point is, I had I got up there and I didn't care. Yeah. I just sung. You're happy. Like I was in my bedroom, you know, because that, that's kind of where I learned how to sing. In my bedroom, just close the door, turn up the, the stereo, sing along with like you know, Alanis Morissette and. So how various, when when you got into West, like fast forwarding a few years, did you seem like a good fit for a boy band or a big band like that? Yeah, I mean. I don't know, I was just like, anything I can do to sing, I will do, so the suggestion, like IOU, which is the band that kind of became really? Westlife, formed in school, you know, um, yes. I actually met Shane the night of that talent competition I was talking about, he was the first person to came up to me afterwards, and he was like, oh, we have to sing together or something, really? little did we know what would happen, but yeah. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, I just, I was like, boy, band, whatever, if I get to sing, yes, if I get to which we record in the studio, yes, um, I got to go into rehearsals, be in a band, and sing all the time. I didn't think about anything else. And then all of a sudden, slowly but surely, I started realizing, oh, hang on a minute, we have to do photo shoots, we have to do interviews. We have to go into rooms full of people from the industry and, like, as Louis would say, work the room, you know? Uh, and I was really bad at that because I was just kind of quite, with, not withdrawn, I was just reserved, you know? Shiny. I didn't know how to talk on the bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> So, but there's a shyness to that too, I think. Yeah, yeah, I suppose shy, yeah. You're, you're, but when you get into that zone and you're in the Westlife world, how do you marry the demands of the, 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 the pop world uh, versus your own personality, which is, as you say, slightly withdrawn? Well, there was a lot of times where I just sort of, right, I have to like put on a smiley face and be on like SMTV Showtime. every Saturday morning. <laughs> you know, I don't know, I'd say we probably were on SMTV more than that at that point. But, um, <laughs> You know, you do sort of step up to it. And, you know, every job has something that you have to kind of, you know, pull yourself a bit more in that area because, yeah. you know, it's not natural. But um, there were certain parts of it that just didn't marry. You know, I just got on with it. Like, I really never liked the camera being on me. I never liked, uh, like, I'm, like, behind the camera. I've loved photography since I was a child, but yeah. to be in front of the camera is a different thing. What were you self-conscious of? I was just conscious of my weight. My weight always fluctuated. I mean, you know, I like, I don't know. It's weird because when I was young, I never realised that I was like, and I'm fluctuating in and out of, uh, like, a little weight or anything like that. But you know, I always fluctuated in and out of it. And you know, obviously, I, I was in an old boys school, and you know, you're very quickly kind of reminded nicknames just like you know come out of, you know, any tiny thing that's different about you. you. So you Anyways, yeah, like there was a few nicknames in school, but you know, to be honest with you, it wasn't too bad. Okay. To all of a sudden be like, okay, now there's like, and before you go on TV shows, of course, like. You know, there's like 14 million people watching this now. You know, and there's, there's actually 50 million people watching this one. And, you know, and you're like, oh my God. And then all of a sudden, all I can describe it as is, you know, when the camera's on you, it's like, say the camera's here, it's like, it just kind of felt like a weight on my face. It felt like it just wasn't right. Do you know what I mean? I just didn't, it was a, an inbuilt thing that 
didn't feel natural to me at all. And so that, and look, it's the music industry. Things are a bit different now. But back then, people would have no problem telling you, you're fat, lose weight. Did they? Like, just before you went on camp, just before you went on camp. That you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not, like, single or anything. It's not like, you know, not going back kind of in that way. No, but it was a common occurrence. Well, I'm describing my experience, I suppose. Yeah. And, what does that do to you, Mark, when, when somebody makes such a comment about your Well, it's like there's 40 million people about to watch it. Yes. And you're fat. <laughs> well, yeah, so how so do you, it's obviously not. But how do you feel when you hear that? Um, I was like, you know what, I forgot about that until he told me. I was actually just ready to go and sing, and all of a sudden someone reminds you. And um, I think that describes me as a person. I'm, I'm, I'm never really too aware of, you know, I'm kind of comfortable enough with my own skin. It was only It's only when other people tell me. And I think there's lots of people like that. And I think now, instead of it being somebody from the record industry or something, it's yes, Instagram it's, it's, or it's Twitter or it's, you know, and, and um, yeah, I mean, it's... It's a heat magazine were cruel, aren't they? Yeah, well, I mean, I wasn't going to name any names, but, you know, uh, yeah, there was there was times where, you know, like, I played a lot of tennis when I was a kid, so there was this charity tennis event on in London, and I was like, yeah, I'd definitely love to play in that, you know, because I haven't played tennis in years, and I went along, and, you know, there's loads of photographers there and stuff like that, there was, like, Jonathan Ross and all sorts. A week later, I opened Heat Magazine, and there I was, like in the middle of a serve, and if you can picture someone serving tennis here, it bent over in two, and my t-shirt had sort of ridden up my stomach, if you know what I mean, and my belly was kind of showing, and they had kind of like done that whole circle of shame thing, and then they, you know, they take like the little bit, it could be a double shade, it could be something that's wrong with the celebrity, yeah. and they sort of circle it and blow it up you know, magnify it, yeah. and I was just open that, and I was just like, Phew. it just, like, destroyed me, you know, this is like mid, not Midwest, like, but like, you know, we were yeah. well in our flow at that point, and, um, so yeah, so I suppose that's something that has always been a part of my life since I was a teenager, you yes. know, is, um, just, it's floating in and out of just a little bit overweight sometimes, and then not, you know, but anyways, the point is, um, a lot has changed, and yes. we no longer accept stuff like that. I mean, it still does go on, but you know, it's not it's not seen as okay anymore. Yes, you know? um, well, and that's the important. Thing. It's so much has moved on. I mean, we've mm. talked about sexuality, and now you're in the band. And let me ask you about confronting or being confronted. How do you describe that? What happened there? Um, you mean with coming out? Yeah. <clears throat> well, so when I came out, I think it's like 17 years ago now. If you stop counting at this stage, but when I came out, I, I think I, I would say I was in a relationship, and I was kind of not caring that much if people seen us kind of walking somewhere together mm. but i i was think i was ready to come out but i but i didn't have the balls to just go and do it okay procrastination etc and um one day i got a phone call from somebody that works around us and they were just like look the son know you're going out with someone the man and um basically they're going to print the story so they want to know do you want to come and talk to them and, ex and explain your situation or or not, you know, because it's going in the paper either way. So um, that was sort of unexpected. And I, once again, I don't look back in anger um, on yes. that. Um, I sort of went that way in a forced way, but it's what happened to me and life got better after it. So, Strangely. so not, you know, something, every cloud is a silver lining yeah. basically. Um, I think I would have eventually came out, but maybe it would have taken me longer. And so, you know, forced the issue. Yeah, you sort of just take the good out of it. You know, um, but thankfully, once again, it's another thing that you know, even in the media industry, like they they wouldn't even consider doing something like that now. And you know, it's just something that used to happen nearly twenty years ago, and it doesn't happen anymore. But in the years that that I've been interviewing you, mostly with with the, the other lads, yeah. honest with you, but um, I don't think I've ever seen you as happier as when, if you don't mind me saying so, as when you became a dad. Uh, I think your whole demeanor, personality, maybe, but certainly I know for a fact as we've talked before. That your life changed for all the right reasons. Absolutely. Talk to yeah. me about Lena. <laughs> You're gonna start getting me. Well, well, well. No, the thing is, I mean, there's something that having a child has unlocked in me, and it's that you don't have time to think so much about yourself, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe I had far too much time to think about myself, and I kind of went in too deep, you know. Yeah. Um, I think, like my friend said to me the other day, you're always better and happier when you've got some sort of project in front of you, you know. Yeah. And of course, having a child is more than just a project, but yeah. like. Everything I do now is, um, there's me hiring a field. <laughs> We're outstanding in our field. Outstanding in our field, um, yes. So, um, yeah. <laughs> of things. But anyways, she, um, everything is through the eyes of a father now. Yeah, everything I do 
even when we even when me and Ken go down the country, say to hotel for a night and have a little night to ourselves or a yeah. night off, it's still we still we're still like yeah, let's just go to bed. Like you know, we want to be back tomorrow. We don't want to be hung over too badly. Um, that doesn't always work out, but you know, but you know what I mean. It's like that's, everything. That's the three of you together. Yes, yeah, so that was on Caden's birthday, and um, lots of balloons, really balloons how, for how, how would you describe Leila's personally? What what's she like? Oh well, she's a bit like me in the sense that she hates being told what to do. <laughs> um, she's she's really lovely, like lucky. Great. She's very much her own person. Um, she sings all day, every day. Don't know how she, for that, where she got that from. Yeah, yeah. Um, in fairness, she's been listening to me since <laughs> she breathed her first oxygen. Sure. But um, she is just an every day. I mean, it, it's it's mad. But like you hear people say this, and then when you go through it yourself, you're like, oh god, they're actually really talking sense there. But it's like every time she does something new, you know. Like the other day, like I always like be tickling her the bottom of her feet, but the other day she was like, Daddy tickle my feet. Yeah. And I was like, Oh my god, she just said a sentence. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, it talks. But honestly, like it's like the the amount of joy that brings me. And, and then she, sometimes you've been doing stuff that everyone might think is like the best thing in the world and you're playing to this amount of people and everything and you mightn't feel anywhere near as happy as that. So it's beautiful little things, you know, my little daughter makes me happier than anything I've ever done. Congratulations, it's a lovely you love your bench and you're very happy for you both. So it's really good. Yeah, thank you. Lena arrived before the tank crew in my surrogacy. And we've spoken briefly about the surrogacy because you're very passionate about it. You what you want things to change for not just you but for for families around the country. Is that fair to say? Absolutely, yeah. You know, um it's strange. Anyone who knows me like knows that I would never like I'm just I'm I'm in this as a dad, um, and I'm like, oh god, yeah, I actually have a bit of a platform here, yes. and for once it'd be really lovely to do something meaningful and useful with it, instead of just kind of, and it's all great to come on and say, oh Jesus, it's brilliant doing duets with Mariah Carey, and all that stuff, but, <laughs> but like, to me, like, to do something meaningful with a platform, I think that's become more important to me yes. recently, and so, like, honestly, it's it's strange to be on the day talking about something that's politically driven, and I'm not even going to get into that, but um, but my point is, I'm here as a father, you know, I'm here, like, that photo of me, or later, a minute ago, I'm here for them, I'm doing what any father would do if yes. they could help their child in any way, you know, um, and that's that's why I'm involved, you know, parents would be passionately involved. Yes, and they want resolution, obviously, I mean, it's been growing a lot for time now. Yeah, no, listen, there's a lot of stuff happening, um, at the end of the day, I think like sometimes people can confuse this as like there's like a few people like up in Dublin that have kids through surrogacy. Yes. Like every time you go in a playground, every time you go into your local supermarket or you go to the cinema or go to a restaurant, I guarantee you that yes. somebody there is either knows somebody or has gone through surrogacy themselves. It's it's very, very common and it's not always something that people sort of wear on their sleeve. Um, you know, they're just going about their daily business. But um, you know, tomorrow I'm gonna to bring Layla to the playground, right? And I just, I just want soon to be able to bring her to the playground and to let her off on the swing and kind of just feel like she's the exact same as every other kid. That's what any parent wants is for their child to feel safe and to fit in. And at the moment, you know, there is laws that stop that, that, that separate her from all the kids in the playground or all the kids, you know, in the supermarket or in the school. And like, it's, it's, um, it's not a big deal actually. And everything is going in a very positive way, you know. Um, it's it's making a lot of headway yeah. it's just that we're getting really nervous now because it's coming to the crunch time yes. and we're nervous that if something went the wrong way um but you know we've got full faith i mean in okay. fairness like you're optimistic yeah like the department of health are fantastic steven dolly's fantastic he's leading the whole thing and okay. we have we, we are really hopeful that they just don't leave any child out and, and have them all equal you know it's 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 uh Make, it's common sense. It's the best luck with with it all because, as you say, it's a different side to you. But again, it's part of this new gear change in your life that, yeah. that you're, you are kind of campaigning in the middle of everything else. Um, the Mass Singer was a great success again. <laughs> again, as you, you said recently that you left a lot of stuff behind in that mask. I think that's quite a yeah. thing to say. Well, first of all, I was like, when I got off, I was like, oh my god, I could actually sing big costume so nobody can see you. And I was like, it'd be really interesting to just sing on a big show like that, but nobody's looking at me. It'd be, for once in my life, I could just sing and not worry about what I look like, you know? And that kind of was an attraction. But then also, you know, I got to, like, they let me design 
the costume a little bit myself and get involved in it. And so I got to bring in a bit of comedy and show a bit of that side of myself, you know, with the bunny's voice. And they let me, like, get the... I was like, the bunny went for it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I set myself too much of a challenge at the end when I was wrecked. But, um, yeah, it was great. It worked yeah, out. it was a lot of fun and it was very liberating. And then he was, he was saying, like, at the end of it, when I took the mask off, I actually felt like I had sort of somehow processed all that old stuff and just let it go, you know. And, right. and so, yeah, and it's important to to have done that because at the end of the day, I'm on camera a fair bit, so it's nice to be on camera and to not care as much. Who? What's the name of the song you're going to perform for us now? Um, yeah, so this song, I mean, look, as I said, everything in my life is really dedicated to my family and to my daughter. Um, and I was thinking of so many different songs to sing tonight, and um, a very, very good friend of mine, Caroline Downey, suggested this, and um, it's called You Are The Reason, and I've got an amazing gospel choir with me, an amazing orchestra, and the band, by the way, who are amazing, and everyone's been so welcoming, including yourself and the producer, so, um, yeah, it's called You Are The Reason, and it's just says everything I want to say, and I think it's also something that hopefully everyone can enjoy the lyrics, because it's just an uplifting song, so I'll give it a shot. Great to see you. It's great to see you so happy. Okay, give it a break. Okay, give it a break.